let me ask you this question why do most people not finish 80 percent of the things that they started maybe your answer is they don't have enough willpower today let's talk about willpower or in other words self-control Every new year, millions of people make new year resolutions. Most of these resolutions are about either quitting or cutting back on an undesirable habit or starting or building up on a desirable habit. For example, most people take the resolution of getting healthier. No wonder the busiest month for gym memberships is January every year. But by March, about 50% of these new joinees stop going to the gym altogether, while about 70 to 80% stop going regularly. Similarly, many resolve to quit smoking. How many can actually do it? I don't know, but my hunch is maybe 80% can't quit. So, about 70 to 80% of humanity lacks the willpower, the self-control it so desperately needs. So today, let's have a scientific look at this elusive willpower we all need but very few among us actually seem to possess. So, in simple terms, willpower is the ability to self-control one's behavior in the face of a temptation or a strong emotion. But why do we need willpower? I think this ability of self-control has three evolutionary benefits. Self-control helps us to be physically fitter, mentally fitter, and socially fitter. Now, we all know the physical and mental benefits of self-control to one's person. But how does self-control make us socially fitter? Let's delve a bit deeper into this often ignored benefit of self-control. As humans started living in bigger and bigger groups, attributes such as courage, cool-headedness, and honesty became more and more important. Be it a tribal society or a modern one, the group members always tend to choose a leader who is courageous, cool-headed, and honest. So what's self-control to do with these three much-desired social qualities? Think about it for a second. The ability to self-control one's fears is called courage. The ability to self-control one's anger is called cool-headedness. The ability to self-control one's greed is called honesty. So long as others in the group believe that you can self-control your fear, anger, and greed better than the others, your chances of being a leader become better. Society puts a premium on self-control. What about the lack of self-control? How is it bad for society? In the general theory of crime developed by Michael Gottfredson and Travis Hirashi, individuals with low self-control tend to be impulsive, insensitive towards others, and non-verbal. So, self-control is good for your physical fitness, your mental fitness, and your social fitness. Now that we know why we need willpower, let's look at how your willpower actually operates. So, What's common between marshmallows, your bed, and your meditation mat? The simple answer is, they all can be used to find how strong your willpower is, if you know what to do, that is. Let's start with marshmallows. I'm sure you must have great memories of roasted marshmallows or a campfire, but this guy had a very different use of marshmallows in mind. In 1972, in what is now famously called the Marshmallow Experiment, psychologist Walter Michel conducted experiments to study delayed gratification in small children. His weapon of choice? Marshmallows. His target? Children of mean age 4 years and 6 months. The test was simple. Give the child an option between a smaller immediate treat or a bigger delayed treat. For example, the child could choose between an option to eat one marshmallow immediately or to wait 10 minutes and receive not one, but two marshmallows. Here's how the children responded. Some children opted for the smaller immediate reward, i.e. one marshmallow, while others opted for the bigger delayed reward, two marshmallows, after waiting 10 minutes. Those who opted to wait 10 minutes showed the ability of delayed gratification. As Michel followed up with the parents of the children who took the test years later, he found a staggering correlation Children who had trouble waiting 10 minutes for double the reward tended to have higher rates of obesity and below average levels of academic achievement later in life. Their counterparts, 
who were able to wait longer for the treat, delayed gratification, had very different outcomes later in life, including lower body mass index and higher standardized test scores. Somehow, this delayed gratification ability in childhood was helping them even after they grew up. It was somehow enabling them with better emotional self-control. In other words, when they grew up, they had much better willpower than those who didn't. If you are given a choice between one treat now and two of the same treats after a 10-minute wait, which one would you choose? Remember, the ability to delay your gratification indicates a stronger willpower. Now, let me ask you another simple question. What's common between your phone battery and your willpower? Willpower is highest in the morning and slowly degrades over the course of the day, just like your phone battery. Also, just like your smartphone needs a good battery charge through the night to get a full battery in the morning, you need to get some very good quality sleep if you want your willpower to be full in the morning. Sleeping less than 6 to 7 hours can deplete your willpower in no time. Sleep deprivation can have a devastating effect on your ability to manage stress, avoid cravings, and exercise self-control effectively. In fact, research shows that a sleepless person behaves almost like a drunk person. But why is sleep so important for willpower? Simply because in order to function optimally, the brain needs blood glucose as fuel. That's the only source of energy the brain has available. Even though the brain is only about 2% of the total body weight, the adult human brain consumes about 20 to 25% of total body resting glucose. To convert glucose into energy, the brain consumes about 20% of total body oxygen consumed while at rest. The front part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, plays a big role in controlling behavior and making rational decisions. When we don't get enough sleep, our prefrontal cortex gets less oxygen. As a result, the prefrontal cortex becomes slow and sluggish, just like the prefrontal cortex of a drunk person. So, this drunk-like brain loses the capacity to manage stress, avoid cravings, and exercise self-control. So yes, self-control or willpower works in the same ways as your phone's battery. But there's one big difference. You can't train your phone battery to retain more juice. So does that also apply to willpower? No. Luckily, we can do things such as having a good sleep schedule. If you sleep every day at a regular time and wake up all fresh at a certain time, that's great. Even if you couldn't meet your sleep schedule once every few days, that's okay. Brain scans have shown that when the sleep-deprived people get a better sleep, they no longer show signs of prefrontal cortex damage. So basically, looking at how much regular and good sleep you're getting in your bed can reveal a lot about how strong your self-control or willpower is. In short, sleep better and you'll improve your power of self-control. So now we know how marshmallows in your bed can tell how strong your willpower is. But how about the meditation mat? Let's find out. While researching the scientific aspects of willpower, I stumbled upon an amazing piece of information. Believe it or not, there's a physiological indicator that can tell how good your willpower is. It's called HRV or heart rate variability. If you own a smartwatch or a health tracker, you may have encountered a metric called heart rate variability in the health stats of your device. But what does HRV actually measure? Basically, when you are at rest, your heart rate sits at around 60 beats per minute. But if you were to examine the timing between each beat very closely, you will discover that it's not exactly beating at one second intervals all the time. Sometimes your heart will beat every second and sometimes it will beat after 0.9 seconds and the other times it will beat after 1.1 seconds and so on. There's a difference or variance in the timing between each beat. This is your HRV. In adults, it can be anywhere between 55 milliseconds to 105 milliseconds. The HRV number can tell us what is happening with our nervous system that regulates functions such as blood pressure and breathing. It's called the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system has two divisions, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system enables your fight or flight response, while the parasympathetic nervous system enables your stop and strategize response. People who seem to possess stronger willpower have a more pronounced stop and strategize response in their everyday behavior 
People with low self-control have a more dominant fight-or-flight response. Sympathetic system raises your heart rate, but the parasympathetic nervous system lowers your heart rate. Sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems are like the yin and yang of your nervous system in that they are always countering one another to create some form of balance in your body. HRV tells you what is going on in this sympathetic versus parasympathetic tussle in your body. If, for example, over the last 24 hours, your health tracker shows a lower HRV than average, it could very well mean that your sympathetic system was more dominating than your parasympathetic system, which means over the last 24 hours, your willpower, your self-control ability was lower than usual. If, however, over the last 24 hours, your health tracker shows a higher HRV than average, that in simple language means that your parasympathetic system was more dominating than your sympathetic system, which means over the last 24 hours, your willpower, your ability to self-control was higher than usual. So the higher your HRV number is, the stronger your willpower is. So then, is it possible to increase your HRV number? Yes, it is. How? Just find a way to breathe slowly. Because remember, slow breathing means a slower heart rate. And as we know, slower heart rate means a higher HRV. A great way to learn slow breathing is meditation. So yes, your meditation mat, provided you practice meditation on it on a regular basis, can actually help you increase your willpower. Let's see how. An average adult breathes about 12 to 24 breaths per minute. But when you do meditation, you breathe much slower at between 5 to 8 breaths per minute. Studies have shown that HRV starts increasing as the breathing rate drops below 12 breaths per minute. But if you really want to increase your self-control, your willpower, then slowing down your breathing to 4 to 6 breaths per minute can do wonders for increasing your HRV number. 10 minutes of slow breathing meditation every day will help you increase your HRV within a couple of months. So that's how your meditation mat can help you increase your willpower. So what's the main takeaways from today's video? First, willpower or self-control is not as mysterious as we initially thought. Today, neuroscience and medical research have enabled us with much more effective ways of strengthening our willpower. Three ways in which you can strengthen your willpower are number one, prioritize delayed gratification, i.e. two marshmallows after 10 minutes or 10 days or 10 months or 10 years, depending on what your marshmallow is, more than instant gratification, i.e. one marshmallow now. Number two, sleep a good quality sleep on a regular basis. Try to go to sleep and wake up at the same time every day and try to get about six to seven hours of good sleep every day. Number three, start tracking your HRV number and do 10 minutes of slow breathing, four to six breaths per minute meditation every day. I hope this video helps you get a better grip on understanding self-control and strengthening your willpower. Try these three techniques and please do let me know in the comments if you benefited from any of the suggestions in this video. Thank you for watching till the end. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.